Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 238. That's dos, tres, ocho for you Spanish speakers out there. How are you guys doing? Great. Good to know. I'm happy you guys are well. How am I doing? Amazing. Thank you for asking. I'm doing good. Not going to lie. No, I'm going to lie. I'm not doing... No, I'm not going to lie. You know what? I'm not going to lie for once. I'm not doing so well. I'm not doing so well, actually. I feel battered and bruised. My body is aching. Every single bit of my body is screaming out for a rest day. And thank God it's Saturday tomorrow. Um, this well, this morning, what, what is this? Friday today. Tomorrow is going to be Saturday. The day, week's just gone by so quickly. Been so busy. Things have been getting on top of me. But you know what? I'm still standing strong. But if, you, if you're going to ask me honestly how I am, I'm going to tell you I'm tired. I am so tired. So, so tired. Um, now I understand why I was fat for such a long time. Especially when I was younger and I was like under 21, right? I was, you know, always hovering around the 250 mark for a, for a long period. Sometimes 240, 37, 38 inch waist, right? Now I know why I was that fat. Because it just, it's just so easy to be fat. Like, why wouldn't you like, why would you purposely want to like, you know, I have, I haven't got, I had a, I had a lot of these moments throughout my life. Like usually, you know, I remember in the middle of a chip in a marathon, I had, you know, I booked this half marathon to go go and run in the fucking middle of Bristol in a village just outside of Bristol called Chippenham. First time I've ever been there in my life because I just Googled it. Whatever, whatever race was, was coming up in that month, I just went and raced it. I didn't really care. I was just so addicted to running at that time. And I decided to venture all the way out to Bristol. Like, you know, I didn't take any holiday days off. I just went after work. Or oh, I went, I think on the, even on the Saturday morning or maybe even the Sunday morning. And I went the Saturday morning, spent the night there, got got a bit drunk and then went and got around on the Sunday. Who does that? To doing it. And then I was about, I think I was at maybe mile 10 or mile 12, just about to approach the end. And then the voice came inside me. I was like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And I was like, I honestly couldn't answer myself. You know, you always have a lot of self-talk when you're running. Especially, or even when you're cycling in the morning. Have you done it before when you're going on your morning commute to work and you're cycling, you're like, oh, you can't bother to do it. The first five minutes are horrible and you're just drugging on. And then suddenly you get the hang of it. You're like, oh yeah, now I love, now I know why I love cycling. Same thing happens in the gym. Same thing happens running, you know, for the most part, right? Same thing happens sometimes even when you have to run errands. You're like, oh, I can't bother to go to Waitrose. I can't bother to go to MS. I can't bother to go to Lidl or Tesco's or whatever to do my weekly shopping. And then you finally go and do it and you're like, oh, thank God I did it today. I didn't do it tomorrow. So I remember having that little bit of a soft talk in my head of like, why are you doing this? And I couldn't answer the question. And I've realized, and it happened again recently. And it always tends to happen whenever I'm doing a lot of things at once. I'm trying to, you know, go for it. So, you know, lately I've been DJing a lot. I've been uploading mixes. I've been uploading loads of these podcasts. This is the first week in a while I've done like once every every day for the most part, Monday to Friday. Last week I did a couple more. No, I did, no last week I did six. So I'm pumping them out as much as I can. And I think that's always when my brain starts telling me like, you need to chill out. You need to take it easy. But you know that isn't true, right? You know if you want to achieve something, you want to get to your next destination, you want to, you know, make your life the way you intend it to be. You know, I have the dream of how I want my life to be set out and what I want to do in the morning and how my day looks, how my week looks, how my month looks, year and all that malarkey, decades. But you know that in order to do it, you have to fight that voice in your head more so than more so than people outside, you know? That's why it always makes me wonder whenever you see big time celebrities like the likes of Cardi B and stuff really obsessed and caring about what people on the internet say about her because more often than not, it's what you say about yourself that's more harmful, right? The day-to-day stuff. You wake up in the morning, especially if you're a female, I imagine that kind of industry, entertainment, hip-hop industry, like, you know, you're very much aware and or maybe in most entertainment industries, you're very, you're very much aware and very afraid of and worried about your image, right? About... Um, how big you're getting, um, how skinny you look, um, your makeup, your hair, your your outfits, where you are, if you're attending this this show, you're appearing on that program, you're very cognitive of your of your kind of um of how you come across visually and the vibe you kind of give off. It's you're very attuned to it, and really and truly, it's your own self that's kind of giving yourself all these negative talks. So to spend all that time worrying about what some random person's talking saying to you about your relationship on social media, if you're Cardi B, I never understood that because. You have enough to deal with inside here in your brain that you don't need to really spend any time answering your critics or not even critics, like answering people that are obviously not fans of you or just want to have you riled up. Because I'm, I'm sure by now, if you're if you're somebody that's familiar with Cardi B, you know that, you know, even if you're the most minute and the most irrelevant or the most, you know, you don't have the most followers, 
you just you know you just throw out if you know if you throw out enough of a spicy comment you know she's gonna say something about you or indirectly go on live and start screaming and shouting which is never something again i think it's a generational thing so i, I don't think i could ever stand there and put my phone propped up next to a windowsill and be like fuck you man i hate you man you hurt who you think you're talking to well it's like what the who does that psychos but anyway i'm um, going back to my point yeah I don't know. I'm feeling run down, man. I'm going. I'm feeling run down. So October has got me feeling run down, and obviously that has to do with the fact that you know, lack of um, what you call it, shitty foods. Obviously, you have to get used to that diet wise. Your your body kind of goes through a little bit of a madness. Then obviously working out. I'm working out once, uh, twice. A, oh shit! I forgot it's Friday, isn't it? I got to run again. Damn it! So I'm working out twice a day, Monday and Friday. So I'm gonna go for a run after work. Oh my god. Okay, cool. And then I'm working out all between the days. No wonder I'm so tired. Now I recognize why I'm tired. I'm so knackered and I'm doing this. I'm uploading all the clips online as well. So check that out. So I'm gonna put the link of the playlist on on my on the podcast app. Check the descriptions. You'll see there'll be a, a channel there where I upload all the clips on there so you can see all the little segments I talk about. But yeah, man. Yeah. A lot of hard work. So with that hard work being said, you know, if you want to support the cause, you wanna make sure I get new cameras, upgrade the camera, upgrade the microphone, or you just wanna buy me a beer. The Patreon link is below in the descriptions. Click that, donate what you can, and let's keep this thing moving. If you're not in the mood to doing that and you're like, you know what, fuck you, Agnes, now I don't need to give you any money. You've got a full-time job. Fair enough. That I agree with. <laughs> then just give me a like, subscribe to the podcast, and have a like, yeah, and share it right with your friends. That would be nice. Just share it. Get it out there. Let people know that you like what I have to say and all that good stuff, and we'll go from there. But yeah, man, feeling run down. But anyway, in an effort to continue feeling more run down, in an effort to kind of expand my horizons, guess what? I'm starting a new podcast, or I've started a new podcast. It's called Stratford Red Devils. It's a very specific podcast because it only concentrates about speaking about all things considering um, to do with Manchester United. So all Manchester United news, mostly London-based um, United fans like myself, hence why it's called Stratford Red Devils, is available now on all the platforms that you you know watch or listen to your podcast. So check that out. I'm going to have a YouTube channel of this set up by the end of today too. So I'll put some videos on there as well. Um, similar sort of setup to this. I probably might change it around and maybe just record it off my iPhone to kind of give it a bit more of a fan feel. You know, I'm not going to be like, this is a United United stand. I'm not going. I'm not going to enunciate my words that way. I'm just going to, you know, give some really concise opinions on football and especially Manchester United from my perspective. Um, hopefully you guys feel it and you vibe with it. So if you like that sort of stuff, do that. And I'm going to just stay away from uploading any football stuff on this podcast because you know it kind of gets me riled up. I feel a bit negative. It gets me angry. And as well, that doesn't even mess with stuff I talk about on here anyway in general. So um, if you want to listen to all of my Man United um um centric stuff or football centric stuff please subscribe to the stratford red devils that stratford red devils s-t-r-a-t f-o-r-d red devils on your apple podcast on your spotify on your whatever google podcast you listen to whatever you listen to check it out on there subscribe and let your friends know anyway um promo away promo aside let's get into the topics today as you can tell it's stratford friday i mean streetwear fridays stratford fridays streetwear fridays so thank you for tuning in as you can tell i've got my little you know mexican hoodie on here that you can see so i'm, I'm kind of flustered in that regard trying to be a bit more streetwear centric loads of streetwear news to get through loads of really interesting stuff loads of nice lookbooks those are nice releases so um strap on in grab yourself a nice glass of water and let's do this right let's absolutely do this let's go through the topics right now so what we have here what do we have here so much stuff to get through with so little time okay cool so first one streetwear and kind of clothing specifically is this honey dijon has launched her own merch collection and it looks really good I'm not gonna lie it looks proper good so honey dijon if any of you guys are aware or not aware she's a very well known very popular dj out there in the electronic space or electronic music space for the most part mostly playing house i'm pretty sure she's, she's a, a chicago native for the most part um really really popular really successful plays all over the world and I think maybe as of the last three or four years, it feels like she's really kind of popped and kind of gone mainstream. People are booking up for fashion shows. I think she did, what, what collection did she do recently? Done runway music for some fashion show. I'm not sure which one it was. One of her fashion friends. But now she's suddenly launching a merch line, I think in collaboration with Dover Street Market, which is even more epic than, you know, some other things that you might have heard of before. So let's read the news here. This is from Vogue. And it kind of um, views it. I kind of saw it on um, 
I actually saw it on Dove Street Market earlier. Um, I didn't even know the merch I was launching. I was like, oh, it's really cool. I like the cut of the T-shirts. It reminds me of this T-shirt I was given by Fats recently that was kind of like a really high neck, sort of like a weird, is it, is it maybe, what do you call that, a 60s fit? Really short in the body, um, really short on the arms. The the neck hole comes really high up, um, really heavy kind of twill. Like, I loved it. I loved it. I've still got the T-shirt actually on me. But this kind of feels a sim similar sort of vibe, as you can see from the T-shirt she's wearing here in the picture. But this article is from Vogue.com. Um, sorry, Vogue.co.uk from the Vogue. Um, is it World page? They've got that weird thing. I don't know. Anyway, I'll link it in the show if you guys to check out. But it says here, Honey Dijon is dismantling boundaries and launching her own namesake brand with Comme des Garçons. Not even Dove Street Market, Comme des Garçons merch, which is quite a cool thing. I wonder where their relationship came from, but hopefully this article would kind of um, expound on it a little bit. So it says the following. Um, late one night in May 2017, Honey Dijon plunged a crowd of well-heeled revelers into a soundscape as multifaceted as its creator. This was Comme des Garçons' after party for that year's Met Gala, and Dijon was doing what she does best, seamlessly weaving classics and cutting-edge tracks while rubbing shoulders with the industry's most influential figures. Once I was figure in attendance, that very evening was Adrian Joff, who I met outside Dover Street Market alongside the Ray Kyle Kubo, and this was me fanning out one time onto Dover Street Market. This was ages ago. I don't know. This is probably when Dover Street Market first launched. Um, when I was on Dean Street, I popped in there once. I don't know what I was going to buy. What was I going to buy? Maybe a book. I think it was a book. Was it a book? It might have been a book. I don't know what book it was. But my, my, I might went to the ideas book. So I remember going there and seeing Ray Kyle Kubo outside. I went to take a picture of her. And obviously, Adrian just said no, she doesn't take pictures. But she's very thankful of your appreciation. Like he did, they have like a line they say. And and Ray Kyle Kubo sort of gave me a little nod, and I gave a little nod and carried, kept to moving. But it was a very, um, it was a very surreal experience to be in the presence of such a influential fashion figure like Ray Kyle Kubo. And obviously, Adrian Joff, who kind of acts as her kind of you know business arm and gets the deals done. He's kind of got his finger on the he's got his eye on the landscape and he's the one that kind of is able to spot all these kind of you know cultural uh, moments that he can kind of maybe uh, align come the garçon with but come the garçon in general are quite picky with who they choose in terms of manufacturing in terms of production in terms of who they carry in their store it's not a very easy thing to get um, involved with it always feels like a bit of a it always feels like, a, especially in the beginning, now I see a lot of um, advertisements for stock assistance and sales assistance in Dove Street Market, but when they first launched, you couldn't even apply for the job on the shop floor. Everything was sort of like, it felt like a real big recommended recommendation vibe. So sort of like the uh, sort of like the Vivian Westwood store, yeah, you don't really imagine you could go in there and just like hand in a CV. Most people that work in there are like well known to Vivian Westwood and that whole scene, and very, political, very politically active, care about the climate maybe are part of some sort of avant-garde forward thinking scene you know it's a very kind of clicky small group of people and it kind of you know adds to the lore of it similar to like a supreme right um, you don't actually go to supreme and hand in a cv right you have to be recommended by someone so it adds to the whole lore so seeing someone like that out there was amazing and obviously having these being collaborating with them it obviously shows that you know there's some sort of synergy that exists between both entities but anyway it continues Adrian Joff, president of CDG and longtime admirer of Dijon's musical ingenuity, uncompromising persona. By the night's end, the DJ and the president would meet, ignite a creative connection that Dijon would later describe as a house on fire. Imagine that. Imagine going and playing a DJ set in a in, in, in for fucking Comme des Garçons, right? Uh, for them at the Met Carla, sorry. Um, and then randomly, Adrian Joss hears your set, right? likes your vibe enough to talk to you number one and then because i'm sure he's seen the amount of after parties they've been to where there's been a dj in the corner playing whatever they're playing for him to see your vibe or to see you hear your music hear what you play feel your vibe look at all the people that are connecting with you and then decide somehow in that conversation to start your own merchandise and to do your own collection under the come the garçon umbrella with their production skills with their manufacturing capabilities and kind of funnel it all through their own store and give you your own namesake um direct to consumer store too dream come true man absolute dream come true because usually those kind of gigs i've done a couple of them in store gigs and for me personally nothing usually comes with them because they are they're probably akin to like a corporate gig right of when you're in a corporate gig they pay well like a comedian if you're a comedian and doing stand-up they always complain about corporate gigs and college gigs college gigs are quite frequent and they pay well um corporate gigs are quite infrequent but they pay very very well so a lot of comedians do it but when they do it they regret it because usually the people in the crowd don't really want to see you they don't really care about you know i've always wondered sometimes when i'm doing these in-store gigs they could, just, they could just slap on a pretty good playlist and, I, and it would do as well as a job as I would do, right? Because no one really cares about the DJ here. Um, you can obviously go into it with a different mindset and be a bit more positive and think, hey, I'm going to make them care about me. But again, it's not the place where people are coming to go and hear a DJ. They're coming to support the brand. They're coming maybe to get their name down on 
you know, a pre-list, uh, I'm sorry, a pre-order list or something. They, I don't know, whatever it may be. They just want to be around and get some free drinks. They don't really want to hear you spinning, right? But anyway, it continues. Um, those flames would um, simmer over the next year until a chance occurrence Paris annual where you got Love Festival where Dijon was headlining, uh, spurred them to back to life. That evening, a friend of DJ showed up to the concert wearing a homemade t-shirt and blazed with the words, Honey fucking Dijon, sick. The shirt's namesake found the garment funny enough to post a picture on her Instagram. Then Dijon later tells me everyone went crazy. Fans flooded her inbox asking where they could get their own version of the tea. Some even took to making their own and wearing some Dijon's gigs around the world. Being as smart as I am, she recalls a recreation. I thought there's something here. It was amazing. Which again shows maybe there's an avenue for someone, which maybe someone like me should make this idea. Well, you know how there's um you know how Jeffree Star does all the merch for the YouTubers? Maybe there's an avenue for someone to come in and start doing merch for DJs, production just producing it for them, because I'm sure their managers don't have time. Agents are probably too busy dealing with their other clients and these are flying around the world. So if you're able to kind of take their vision and take what they're about and basically create a t-shirt or merch line for them and just kind of put it up on Teespring kind of style site, you probably do quite they'll probably do it'll probably do quite well. And again, it's just another extra kind of revenue stream. It allows you to kind of see who your fans are in the crowd. And like I said previously, I think nowadays people would probably be more adept or more apt or more or more. They'll be more encouraged or they'll be more willing to wear a merch line by a, by a DJ instead of maybe a few years ago. I think nowadays people like, you know, they view DJs as like, you know, as the same way they view musicians now. It's not the same. It's not like hasn't got the corny um, sort of like sheen it used to have maybe back in the day. Um, anyway, it continues here. Da, 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 they continued. She even got leather bags, mate. Leather little pouches. Amazing. There was. And a few months after the festival, over dinner, her adoptive home of Berlin, Dijon showed jo- Joff about the shirts and the uh, pops up. Uh, so, you know what? The thing about the shirts as well, I want to make a point about. Because uh, I have a lot of friends that do this. And it's something that kind of annoys me because some of my friends that do this are very talented designers or very talented creatives. I have a very, I'm very much against the people that are sharing ideas for merch. Um, ideas or t-shirts they want to do and it's just psd files essentially a jpeg or a line sheet of an image they want to do for for a, a garment i'm i'm very again i can't speak because there's a lot of ideas i have stored in my um hard drive here that i haven't printed into a physical item but the reason why i'm not posting the line sheet is because i haven't printed them out i haven't made them into a physical item until you make something into a physical item i don't think you should ever share the line sheet as a f- form of like flexing your creative skills it does nothing there's not it doesn't show anything it doesn't bring it to life the only reason why that's why it's part of the reason why i think supreme is successful these years they show you stuff like real stuff you don't get you don't see line sheets you see the stuff in general nowadays if some leaks come out about the sneaker collaborations and you get like you know little illustr- little vector drawings but for the most part you see the physical item you see even the items that are on their online stores nothing i hate more than seeing a garment on an online store and it's quite clearly um a physical a physical blank with just the photoshop or sorry with this the psd file or the illustrator file put on top of the item because they don't want to make it because they want to wait until someone orders the item first no make five make ten make them take pictures of the items and then upload them so people can see what they actually look like Again, it's not it's not gonna be a good representation because people are usually browsing their these kind of online stores on their mobile phone but i guess it's just a weird um I, I don't know if it's like a weird sort of like way to like you know i remember i mentioned about marathon runners and not turning up to races where because you know you get to you uh, sign up for a really popular race and then you get the little icon or you get the little graphic that says i just signed up i can't wait to do it. however it kind of gives you that, that dopamine hit that you've done the race right you get a little email that shows you a little image you can share on your socials to say that you've got a place in London Marathon. So a lot of people don't turn up to the actual race because they've already got their dopamine hit because all the likes, people are going, oh, you're running or I'm going to raise money. Some people don't even turn up because they've already got a dopamine hit on that regard. So I think sometimes those JPEGs are like a weird dopamine hit of like, hey, I've done it. I've done the job, but you haven't. Show us the real item. Let's see it in, in real life. That's the way to real go forward. And I think that's what really got, I think, Honey DJ on this gig or this kind of collaboration is that, um, there was an obvious demand for it. Imagine someone just drew Honey Fucking DJ with a biro or with a Sharpie and a white t-shirt. And you're, you're, Joffy, you're like, shit, this thing has got 100,000 likes and, you know, everyone's really, want, everyone's clamoring for it. There's a real a connection between a real item as opposed to just like a, a kind of, you know, figurative thing. Anyway, um, honey fucking um, um, Dijon, da, da, da. everything is functional, Dijon explained, but nothing is beautiful. Plus, she'd always wanted to create a collection of luxury DJ accessories. Oh, that's what they are, little cap, awesome. So, like, similar to how footballers wear when they, with their torches and shit. Responded after the moment and said, why don't we do it together? Honey fucking Dijon, the grassroots merch campaign 
had become honey fucking Dijon, a collaboration between Comme des Garçons. Dijon nearly fell out of her chair. She might have anticipated some interest of the collaboration, but she never thought it would be coming from fuck Comme des fucking Garçons. But some of the fifth, it will be launching under the reins of um, the agency of Dover Street Market, which Jeff also oversees. The capture collection is set to include graphic t-shirts along with embellished hood um, wallets, record bags, USB carriers, and all manner of essentials for DJs and honey fucking DJs alike. Like, look at that. That's such a good t-shirt. It's such a good shape. You've got those massive um, armholes you can pick in. Nice short body. You can tuck into some jeans. Honey Fifth fucking Dijon logo on the back with, I'm, I'm assuming, the LGBTQ kind of colorways and a rainbow kind of embellishing it. It looks really nice, man. I, 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 think, I, want, I think I'm going to get that t-shirt. It's like 80 quid as well on Dover Street Market. The pieces will... Which come in a range of hues from matte black to, co to cotton candy, emanating an elegant sleekness, a style not dissimilar to the designer, sophisticated yet durable. These items are engaged, uh, <laughs> items to be engaged with, not aspired to, which I agree with. You wear those shit to the ground. Dijon says, describing how she drew inspiration for these, she grew up in Chicago. These kids would wear uh, Gianfranco Ferrer sweatshirts to the club. Oh, yeah, nice. Gianni Versace, Claude Monet, Jean Paul Gaultier, Vivian Westwood, she tells me. These were inner city black kids from the south side of Chicago getting these clothes by any means necessary um 15 16 8, um 8 17 year old wearing these clothes to a dance then sweat them off it wasn't just about looking rich it was about engaging with culture music and whichever which whichever which i totally agree with what's more as joffy is quick to point out hgf is not an collaboration in conventional or at least modern sense there was no brainstorming joff says no sit around table chatting whether or not she liked pink or lilac better the aesthetic vision for hg was dijon it was about trusting her he says suggesting that the true moment of collaboration was not the process of producing individual pieces but rather a process of realizing a shared creative sensibility which is awesome look at the dj bag it looks really good i'm telling you guys dijon says it was literally so organic like you know when you bump into a friend while walking down the street in new york and then you end up hanging out all night then the next thing you know you're opening a club together she she asks with a laugh it's, which is this is why i love nightlife man where else are you going to get this kind of collaboration where else are you going to get this sort of richness and vibe like you can see you can see, you can feel how happy she is just right reading this article where else can you get that apart from nightlife this is this is why the article i mentioned in my previous podcast about creative hotspots it's so important our uh, creative night spots for you know creatives to go out to so important or hated you to mention in the article you know it's such a insular occupation especially being a dj or any sort of creative occupation you're spending so much time at home honing your craft digging through crates um going through um record stores going on discogs mixing uploading stuff making tracks it's so it's so so isolating you don't spend any time with friends especially if you're gonna get good at it right so the only times you can spend with your friends and let your hair down is when you go out at night right to hear the music that you're playing or to maybe play the music you've been making or just to connect with your scene in general and imagine from that occasion that rare moment that you go out and actually hang out with your friends something like this transpires you end up rubbing a restaurant you end up in a gallery you book a dj or you do this you do that you can hold it together it's so fucking cool i really love it man it's so inspiring what a great great story so here's a, here's a version in white and also and so honey dijon might even begun an official officially that night in berlin but the seeds of inspiration what, what happened in berlin uh, in berlin what says here new york is burning the, 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 but yeah check it out man it's a really good collection it's available now at dover street market i'm pretty sure let me quickly see if i can get it up on here yeah home uh, huh? mm -hmm. but yeah I'm a fan of it, man. Yeah, here it is. It's available now on Dove Street Market. So many good um, colors of t-shirts. I've got a nice little wallet here as well that you can check out. Like, so fucking good, man. Honestly, really, really good. Really good stuff from everyone involved. But I'm sure they, they, they don't need me to tell them that, innit? But yeah, look at that. Look at that. Some good shit here, innit? You've got t-shirts. You've got a white t-shirt as well as available. 80 quid, which is really good, good good look the pink one looks amazing as well i think they'll, they'll go off really well with that pink and lilac and something like the green you've got a small leather case you've got a small a medium bag i, w I wonder w which one's a dj case for the headphones and shit I'd, I'd like to get that actually i wouldn't mind having that really fucking beautiful 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 stuff amazing i like how they did it as a collaboration as well it's just her name on it it's not there's no like come de garçon tag anywhere they do stuff really well come de garçon man the collaboration is amazing so yeah congratulations to her um check it out now i'm double shoot market sunglasses small bags wallets pouches and t-shirts i'm sure some more stuff as well down the line very 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 soon next on the list here what do we have 
Da, 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 da. Oh, off white Jordan 5s. Are you guys aware of that? Do you guys care? I saw this mentioned on full size run the other day, and I thought I'd include it on here because you know it's streetwear Fridays. Supposedly, um, there's going to be another Jordan collaboration with Off White coming up very, very soon. I'm sure you guys are already aware of and already tired of. Maybe some of you are tired, some of you are kicking yourself for not getting the uh, Jordan the Off White 10 collection with Nike. I got the Jordan ones. I think I got two pairs left. I got the Chicago Bulls color and the all white color way of the Jordan one, but you know hardly wear them because, like I mentioned before, Jordan ones as as visually and aesthetically pleasing as they are. You know, it's probably the it's Jordan ones are probably the one trainer. Maybe apart from an Air Force One, and maybe with the exception of a hmm, Air Force One, Air Jordan, or Jordan One, maybe Adidas Campus for some people, not for me. Or I, what else is a trainer? But maybe a Doctor Mart, maybe a Vans, maybe a Vans Old School. There's, there's not, or maybe a Converse at 70s All Star. There's not many shoes that generally go well with most trousers, right? It's quite hard to find trainers or shoes that go with most things. And I think the Jordan Five is one of the only shoes that goes with a lot of things. Like it's a really fucking good shoe. Um, so even though it's a good shoe aesthetically, I just think comfortable, comfortability wise and um, comfort levels, it's just on an all times low. Maybe it's because. <gasps> I spent so much time wearing so many thick old shoes. I mentioned before to do you guys that I love the Yeezy 700s. Um, I love my Balenciaga Triple S's, even though they're probably a half a size too small. I love big chunky shoes. I've got a pair of New York boots, New York boots I bought recently. I'm more, I've, I, you know, I could always be seen, you know, one day out of the week wearing a pair of Dr. Martins. I love those things. But I think maybe all those years have kind of fucked up my feet. So now when I wear... Uh, when I wear like you know trainers that are a bit thin, I kind of I suffer a lot. And Jordan ones are probably the, the, the way they went that way for me. And plus, I think sizing wise, Jordan ones. I'm a UK ten in general, but I think when I wear you when I try and when I try and wear a UK ten in Jordan ones, they're a little bit too small because the, the toe box kind of points to the front. Then when I size up half a size, they get too long, so I have to basically wear a size ten and then take out the insole. But then when you take out the insole of a Jordan one, if you've ever seen a Jordan one, it's not really an insole; it's like a foam bit. And then by that time, your feet are basically to the ground, and you can feel every pebble, every sort of even you know what you walk past the zebra crossing, and he's got the little bumps on the on the floor, and those are basically meant for blind people, right? So they can um, navigate their way around. Sometimes you feel those coming through your feet. It's like ugh. But, you know, what can you do? But that being said, um, Jordan 5s are, are, are a very popular shoe. Um, I think in I don't know what era that was. Was that maybe just after? Was that what would you say? Was that 2011? There was a big boom of Jordan 5s. Everyone was wearing them. I know my friend Marcus was fucking, you know, you could, he was always pictured in a pair of Jordan 1s. The office London had a pair, always wearing them with skinny jeans. So they're a very popular shoe with people. Um, I'm necessarily not a fan of them. I think they don't really drop well with my feet. They, that that big fat 3M tongue on the front doesn't look that great. And I think in general, they look the best with shorts on, but people like to wear them with jeans. So it's not really a good idea tucking your shoes behind them. I don't know. But supposedly there's a rumor they're going to come out. This is from Sneaker News. Off-White and Jordan 5 releasing in 2020, which is interesting because I'm not sure. I'm interested to see how they're going to launch them. Are they going to launch them as part of another? Because I remember he had a, as part of Virgil's gallery exhibition in Chicago, that MoMA uh, retrospective thing that he did. Um, is it a MoMA? I don't know where it was. Whatever gallery that it was. I remember there being a, a section of the gallery that basically showcased loads of um, of the ideas the, of the kind of, you know, the cutting room floor that end up on the cutting room floor, things that weren't approved or things that didn't get, you know, go to towards the end. I think in, in the end, if you look at the shoes that were denied or that were not, didn't go through to the end, I think we're, ha I think I'm happy with the, with what we got in the tens and what was missing out. I don't think there was any, there was any misses, misses really. Even the Jordan 4, which is my favorite Jordan of all time. I don't think that colorway was that great. It was sort of like a bread colorway with like a translucent, um, sort of like front bit at the like the front paneling was a bit translucent. I think with a red bit at the back. If you haven't find it, actually, put a picture up. Um, let me see here. Jordan's exhibition is here. I remember there was, a, there was a whole table full of t of trainers that that didn't make it. Yeah, here, here they are. I found it already. So, actually, you know what? I take it back. The Jordan Four that was kind of off white was really nice. I've got it here actually. So the, the bread sort of colorway, the flip of the bread colorway, I wasn't really a fan of. I didn't think that looked too great, um, in my opinion. And, and, and this is my favorite shoe of maybe of all time. This along with the infrared Air Max One. I mean, so the infrared Air Max Ninety, maybe the Air Force One, um, high, all white with a the strap. These are probably my three favorite models of all time from Nike. But 
I don't think that that Jordan four colorway in the in the off white kind of worked. You know, it's all like translucent wings, translucent netting, and it's sort of like faded at the front. Kind of remind me a little bit of the you know it reminds me of actually colorway wise. It reminds me a lot of the Balenciaga triple S that I have. It looks basically the same, doesn't it? Right? Or maybe the triple S looks like that. It's sort of like faded a bit at the front. I don't know. Maybe. Um, then you've got this. I think this Jordan was really nice. A kind of off-white cream sample. They they look really beautiful. They remind me again of an old Air Force One colorway. Um, I think it was like a JP version. It was sort of like an essentially completely cream and sail, all white sole, gum sole, and then a kind of a yellow swoosh, I think. So they look quite cool. But there wasn't that many things. There's a Jordan 1 here with like a yellow turbo that people might have liked. But I don't think there's many left on the cutting room floor that were people are really crying out for. So I think in the end, we got quite a good collaboration out of them. But I'm interested to see what they do with this Jordan 5, how they're going to release them. This, but this, this, read, this is from Sneaker News. It says the following. It says, rumored to release in 2020. It says, since opening the doors of his exhibition at the MCA, okay, um, the modern, what's that? Modern contemporary art, modern Chicago contemporary, I don't know what that stands for. Um, shedding light on the many works that he's had with the entirety of the Beaverton branch thus far. Virgil Abloh has led many, many to speculate on a following Jordan brand collaboration, hopefully continuing the elements of the Nike 10 one. Through yet not confirmed rumors of an off-white Jordan, Jordan Air 5 are slowly making their way to the surface, surely followed by a many imaginative mock-ups. Uh, blah, blah. so yeah so this is no one really knows but there's a rumor out there that's going to come out again i'm not too sure about these um not my favorite model again for the resellers it's probably going to be a no-brainer to buy um there's still loads of the jordans i don't think you can find any of the nike 10 collaboration under maybe 400 dollars or under 500 dollars. so if you want to make a quick buck then maybe get on that asap but for a sneakerhead or for somebody that's into trainers like myself meh i can pass on that again i'm not that bothered about jordans anymore i think nowadays i'm trying to expand if I am going to buy sneakers, I want to make sure that I kind of go back to and harken back to the old days of being a sneakerhead where you actually found trainers that no one actually liked and you started rocking them and then that made them popular. You've seen them a lot now with Ace Rocky and those kind of flame converses that are on sale everywhere for a while. Now he's wearing them and now you can't find one pair anywhere, right? That's essentially what sneakerheads is being about, like picking something that you like, wearing the fuck out of it and then making other people think, oh shit, they're quite cool, right? Ian Connor did that for a bit with Sketches. Like, dude, that's what sneakers head was about, like finding some weird Deodora, some weird Essex and making that pop. But a Jordan 5 nowadays, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit meh. It reminds me of like a Jordan 6 or 7, you know, with skinny jeans and leather jacket. I'm not really on that vibe right now at the moment. But again, if you're a reseller or if you're just a, a, a fan of sneakers in general, or Virgil, there may be something that you want to buy. But, you know, again, for me, it might be just be a reselling thing. Not Nothing more, nothing less. But what can you do? Next on list here, we have Noah Full Winter 2019. Woohoo! One of my favorite brands, if not one of my or the favorite brand out there at the moment, they do the God's work. Noah, um, formerly, um, no, sorry, no, is it Noah? It's Awake. It's Awake, isn't it? When did Noah? Why is that click? Why did I say that for? Oh, okay. Awake. Awake, um, New, New York, sorry. Um, uh, this is their full winter collection. And I'm sure you guys are, are, are familiar with Awake. Um, it's obviously founded by an ex Supreme employee in Angelo Basque. And he's kind of gone on, he kind of quit Supreme, uh, maybe at his peak as well, right? The kind of global expansion, there's rumors of the San Francisco store, maybe another European store opening up very, very soon. So they're very, you know, they're out there pumped, you know, loads of money's been pumped in. James J.B. has been acknowledged with these kind of mainstream awards and shit. People are like, you know, trying to copy the, um, the secret source that Supreme have. So for him to decide to kind of venture away from Supreme and take a step away was a very brave decision, but also very apt very um a very good indication of just how creative and how um how much he needed a voice right because if you know andre basque you know his involvement in nom de guerre from back in the day so you know he's got a very storied history in streetwear it's not like someone that just came out of the blue um he's been around for a while so maybe the idea to start his own brand and to have his own little outpost to create to have his own way of presenting streetwear was something that he wanted to do and we know from the stuff that noah's done so far and um uh sorry that brendan babylon's has done so far at uh, noah that these people that worked underneath Supreme had a very particular way that they saw streetwear um, being presented and they couldn't do it under the Supreme umbrella. Everything so far we've seen from Noah, everything so far we've even seen from Awake doesn't look anything like what Supreme would do. Uh, maybe there's a couple of pieces here and there that you can maybe see sprinkling collection, but overall Supreme seemed like an incubator for um, those talents and those abilities those people have. And over a period of time, the only natural progression, and, and, and again, I think in general too, maybe it's a self-sustaining thing. I think Supreme survives as a brand when people like Angelo, when people like Brendan decide to go out and venture away and go and do new things because then it invites newer talent to come in because 
where it means, you know, imagine if Angela and Brenda say, you know, I can't talk to that consumer anymore. I want to talk to another consumer. Then whoever wants to talk to the Supreme consumer comes in and it kind of regurgitates. And then when those guys and girls get over it, they go out and then people else come replace. It's a really uh, um, efficient way to make sure the brand is fresh because, you know, what a Supreme, 20 plus years in and still every collection sells out, every collection's more coveted, every collection resells. People are wet. And the thing about Supreme now, even though I don't wear it as much, people actually wear it. Like, that's the thing that I'm happy to see. You see kids wearing the actual item, which is nice. Back in the day, there was a little bit more of a, oh, I've got it in the plastic bag thing, I think. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but you see a lot of Supreme, especially used Supreme being sold, which is, no, I'm not mad at all. But um, let's get back to Awake. Awake NY is from um, Angelo. Again, I've been keeping my tabs on this, and I think there are so many brands out there at this kind of level of streetwear that are doing so many great things. I think nowadays, if you're a kid and you want to start a brand, or if you're a kid and you want to wear a brand, there's so many options you have to choose from. And I think Awake should definitely be something you should be including in your wardrobe. And you can tell over the... And I, what I like about streetwear is that in my opinion, um, what I prefer about streetwear over fashion is that you can grow with a brand and you can see it evolve and develop as it gets more popular, as they secure more investment, as the production quality increases, manufacturing increases, maybe knowledge, garment, fabrication, all these things, are imp when they improve over time, you can kind of ride the journey. You can start off buying a t-shirt from a brand printed on a D DTG printer or whatever it may be, um, maybe kind of hand painted or whatever it may be, and then over time they can start going into cut and sew. They can start making actual their own, buying their own fabrics, not just buying it off the shelf or manufacturing their own fabrics. It's a really cool space to be in as a fan of an of a brand or a fan of a designer. You can really stand there and support somebody from the, from the inception all the way until they kind of blow up and become you know mainstream. Like for instance, like a, if you're the hundreds fan back in the day, right? You could have seen the hundreds from when you know, Bobby was essentially sketching stuff on tracing paper and then, you know, going to the screen printing shop and screen printing stuff himself onto a t-shirt. And then now suddenly, you know, they're sold in fucking shopping malls all over the United States, all over the world for the most part. It's quite a cool journey to be on. So Wake has got this um, new Fall Winter 19 collection, which for me looks like maybe their best one so far. I actually like Spring Summer collection, Spring Summer 19 too. I think there's some really cool collections there with the twin towels and the kind of long trench coat. It looks fucking banging. But I like this Awake collection here. We've got some really nice, amazing, I don't know if it's tie-dye, sort of like print here at the beginning, first image, sort of like a tracksuit, sweat tracksuit with an amazing um front of the Awake logo. Um, it reminds me a little bit of who's the graphic designer, who's the tattoo artist that tattooed um, Virgil and Kanye. Um, he's got, oh, he's got, he does the stuff with the cash, with the money and the skulls. It seems like something a fun that he would have done. So kind of like an italic thing. Um, it's sort of like 3D rendered of well, fr 3D shaded. So it's kind of the 3D model of it. Um, outline on the front. You got the little pleak, the A at the front, and you got the awake logo at the back. And it's sort of like weird um, tie dye volcano -y print red blue black white yellow and oranges really nice hues there um the trainers are interesting also are there a collaboration that we see there at the bottom can we zoom in there not too sure if they're collaboration maybe they are but the sweatshirts this again the tracksuit looks fucking banging i'm a big fan of that this is the jacket that i'm gonna be all over like a rash when this comes out i'm buying this instantly number one i love the cashier that the kids got on the lookbook so the styling already is very much um it's very much in the you know in the same sort of feel and vibe of the quintessential kind of like retail mafia streetwear sort of like um new york streetwear centric lookbooks you know stark backgrounds cool angles really cool casting really great accessories utilizing the accessories maybe of the model that they're wearing themselves you know what i mean some nice little bits and pieces included there and just simple not a lot of clashes in colors not a lot of clashes in prints just some really basic um styling tips but the coach jacket they've got here looks banging it's essentially like um their version of a coach jacket but also made like sort of like a coach jacket but like a starter coach jacket it seems like a little bit like um not sure if it's reversible it looks reversible i like the fact that they pinched it in on the sides make it look more of like a bomber the kid's got a ring on a casio gold watch it looks fucking amazing um so awake ny in that similar sort of font you've got it in this kind of um is it the what what what, what colorway is that is that uh, almighty ducks what colorway is that? i'm not sure i'm not familiar with hockey teams but uh you've got the purple and lilac there you've got this amazing cardigan it looks really cool a very a very kind of i'm gonna say a very um jamaican caribbean uncle vibe with that cardigan and sensed why the kid that's modeling it has these amazing dreads on um again a nice jumper here on the side um new york city we've got some nice kind of pajama -y silk shirts from awake as well with some egyptian motifs on it which look really cool i'm sure there's a lot of 
um, a lot of interesting backstory that goes into that that Angelo is probably going to make sure that we are aware of somewhere down the line. We have an amazing, again, some great hoodie ideas here with the logo sort of like um, double um, two logos on top of each other. So you've got one logo with a border, one logo without a border, sort of like stitched on top of each other with a bit of a space you've got this amazing nice really cool beanie again some quintessential streetwear stuff you got a really nice rib beanie here that looks really really well done maybe they're going to put durags together as well as part of the collection you've got a flannel t-shirt a long sleeve tie-dye t-shirt with a picture of like a maria with like a was that maria right a, a saint on it on the front another cool t-shirt here with some great logo on the, on the back and the front similar to the tie-dye thing just a, a really cleverly put collection and again that coach jacket um, I think it's a coach jacket, right? Is that a zip inside? So it must it must be reversible. And probably it's not. Probably it's just a coach jacket style type thing. It looks really cool. Um, again, so here's the full lookbook or line sheet, you'd maybe call it, um, from Awake here. Very again, very much quintessential streetwear. Um, some great some great uh, outwear bits. Some great t-shirts. Long sleeve button ups. Um, a couple of accessories and just really well done, man. Really, 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 really well done. Like I, lo I love the look of this. Let's kind of quickly scan through this. So you've got the coach jacket. You've got the hoodies, obviously, in the two colorways, the tie-dye and the black. Again, very much. That's what I mentioned before, like a physical item. This comes to life for me because, number one, you're seeing these cool kids wearing them in the, in the little book. And number two, there's an actual physical item that's been taken a picture of, uploaded onto the internet so that you can purchase. So I'm a big fan of this. Again, you've got this amazing rose of flower cardigan. You've got great T-shirts there as well. I mean, great, sorry, long sleeve shirts. Um, silk pajama shirts, you've got some great flannels, plaid shirts there, a couple of good long sleeves, great line of collection of t-shirts, another collection of t-shirts, black, white and camo print which is nice, you've got a corduroy logo caps which I'm sure will be very very popular with the kids that like to wear dad caps for me, I can't because I've got a massive head and my hair is huge, maybe the bucket hat I could wear but again maybe I'm a bit too old to wear a bucket hat nowadays, the cable or the cable knit or the kind of you know the 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 knit the knit beanies i'm a big fan of that pink and neon green colorway goes fucking off so that would be a good one to get um i love the again the, the kind of rainbow of the same as the tie-dye maybe kind of collaboration um, in terms of the hue of the beanie you've got some nice sort of a level little pouch there again nice little toiletry bag for you to take with you a nice waist bag as well there great i love the collaborate the color combination between the orange and the lilac as well that's a very nice hue You've got, is that like a grinder for spices, right? Um, that looks really cool. And some great excess looks. Some awesome sticker packs as well there that you can take a look of. So, again, quintessential streetwear. This is the reason why I love for 11 streetwear. It's very to the point. Um, and, again, just spark, to me, um, really reminds me of the old school retail mafia days, man. Some really cool stuff. It's due to come out October 22nd. So, set your clocks ready. Loads of cool stuff that I'm sure most of it will sell out very, very soon. When it when that, when that's available for to purchase, but yeah, really cool stuff from Awaken. Why one of my favorite streetwear brands out there at the moment. I think if you're a kid now and you're looking for a new brand to kind of support and back, these are your guys. These are your guys. Next on the list we have Supreme Air Max ninety five Italia. Right in keeping a connection between Supreme family. Supposedly there's a rumor that Supreme's next sneak collaboration is the Air Max ninety five in a similar vein as the Air Max. 95 Italia that came out back in the day. If you're familiar with this podcast, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Air Max 95's JP editions, stuff that are specifically made for the Japanese market, stuff that are specifically sold in stores like Atmos. And you'll know that those colorways were some of the most legendary, some of the most beautiful colorways that you'd ever see. Very, very, very simple uh, color combinations, maybe no more than three or four colors. Very cool applications of materials. Um, and then that was also the era when they had the massive bubbles, sometimes with the PSI markers on the side. But then I think after a while, people were reporting faults or faulty pairs, bubbles bursting, stuff getting cloudy. So uh, Nike had to basically reduce the PSI, um, re-engineer them, it basically enclosed the bubble a little bit more so that now they don't pop as much as they should do. I've always had a dream to kind of maybe, you know, the MX 95s take a little um, blade and essentially like cut the edges of the bubbles around. So, so you know, similar to like some Asian people when they want to get eyelids, they kind of slit their thing and kind of push it around. Maybe, maybe slit that kind of thing like an eyelid and take that thing off so you can expose more of the bubble. But I'm sure if I did that, I'd actually pop one of the bubbles. So I don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, um, Drake was, Drake actually maybe in an unintentionally leaked images of this new sneaker collaboration with Supreme, um, which is interesting because i'm i'm surprised have you is this the first time drake's been given a new pair of sneakers or something new that no one's wearing for supreme I'm, i can't think of anything he's debuted i know he's debuted a lot of nike stuff 
Maybe it's come from Nike as well. Yeah, maybe it's come from that's come Supreme. Um, because he doesn't really get given Supreme stuff. Really, it feels like to debut before. You see other people wearing it, like the skate team and stuff, and other influencers, but you don't really see him wearing it beforehand. Um, and usually it feels like Supreme just get people to come in beforehand and buy stuff, maybe at cost value or cost price. I don't know. But yeah, I like the look of it. Um, again, you can't really see much of it here on this picture, but essentially it's completely leather, luxury, luxurious Italian leather for the most part. Um, you got no completely leather, no mesh or anything else involved. Um, again, to completely kind of redoing the whole const. const uh, the usual kind of 95 model where it's got mesh involved in it but it's because they're completely completely leather leather upper with a kind of perforated bit at the top here where the mesh would be and it's also got lex wax leather laces too so again just a entirely leather black shoe if you know anything about me you know i love black trainers so this is going to be way 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 within my um remit of things i want to buy this is news from sneaker news we don't really have a date on them at the moment um it's rumored to come out sometime this year i'm assuming right as part of the collaboration but there's no real idea on what the on what it'll be but w just imagine but what, one thing i can tell you they're going to be expensive um similar to the htms that came out back in the day that use really good leather and croc skin and stuff these are going to be very pricey usually you know to manufacture a shoe like this can you know basically consist entirely of luxurious italian leather is going to cost you an arm and leg especially if supreme decides to go down the route of using you know the leather that Bottega Veneta and all these kind of companies use to kind of manufacture their clothing and basically put that as part of the story, as part of the copy, you're going to be, you're going to have to really, really put down your chip and you're going to have to not use chip and pin and withdraw some money or put that fucking card in the card machine, mate, and enter those four lovely digits, boom, 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 and press enter and then close your eyes and hope you don't hear, you know, that weird beep sound. <laughs> Because these are going to be expensive. They're not going to be 125 or 130 These are probably going to be 500 pounds and probably plus, I think, um, each. Especially if you consider how much those Tom Sachs um, Mars Yards, the 2.0s went for, the ones that were kind of with the massive sort of like sock over them. They went for a lot of money. And there was a lot of engine. There was a lot of um, tooling and um, creation that went into making those kind of one-off shoes. I'm sure Nike's not going to use that mold ever again for another shoe or the, those, that kind of massive kind of parachute thing. So those kind of things always cost the companies a lot more because they have to set up an entire new process to get those things done. So don't expect these to be cheap, my friends. Don't expect them to be cheap. But yeah, they look amazing. I'm a big fan. of them. probably my favorite collaboration so far of the recent years. They've not really hit so far, have they? Those Nike Dunk SBs that came out. Or have they come out already? The one with the silver sort of like patent front bit don't look the best um maybe to skating they look quite cool i think after you've kind of you know um rubbed or fucked up the front of them a bit enough or enough from doing ollies and kick flips and all that malarkey then they should look a bit better look fucked up but if you're a sneakerhead i think the way those sps with a star on the back of them look a bit a little bit naff but i'm a big fan of these they're probably going to come in i'm assuming they're going to come in black red and blue I don't know why. I just got a feeling maybe a green as well. Um, so maybe a green and red to kind of ch ch um, lend to the whole um, old. Do you remember Supreme did that whole kind of fake Gucci print that was like green, yellow, red, and orange, I think, or something? So maybe there might be something similar to that. So yeah, keep an eye out for that when it comes out or if it comes out. You never know because this might be a collaboration that they're kind of mulling over and then they decide not to do it in the end. You never know. So keep an eye on it regardless. Next on the list here we have... Oh, DC Shoes and Butter Goods. DC Josh Kalis OG. This is already out and it's already sold out for the most part. Whoops. Um, so don't expect it to be available anytime soon. But basically, um, DC Shoes did a collaboration. Butter Goods did a collaboration with DC Shoes. Um, and they brought back this amazing Josh Kalis OG in the fucking amazing colorway. Uh, great lookbook to boot as well. I've got it here on the, on the screen. And I've not skated in a while. It's been a while since I've skated. Maybe a few years, like, like consistently. And skating, like with most things, when you don't do it often, you fucking, you know, you lose it. And then, you know, even just fucking standing up on a board and pushing, um, like Gino, you fucking fuck up really quickly. So you have to consistently keep at it. But again, you know, got things to do. But if, if ever there was a time for you to get back on my board, if ever time for you to get back skating, to head back over to my land and fucking try and drop in for the 17th time, these would be it. These, these um, Kelly shoes are fucking amazing. Again, how come back to the old days when I used to fucking obsess over Crumble Incident and kind of watch all the scans he uploaded. Um, they remind me of just, you know, back in the day, you know, big blue denim jeans, t-shirts, baseball caps, basically tilted a bit to, the, to, to one side. They look fucking great. So essentially you've got um, all kind of like a blue and white upper, nice little gradient on some of the bits on the upper as well you've got essentially like kind of like a gum sole but not really more like a brown um 
a brown, a, yeah, gum sole, but not like a clear gum sole that you maybe see on an Air Force One um, with the little air bubble, with the little enclosed air unit at the back. And we're just really tastefully done by Butter Goods. Again, they just essentially brought back the Joss Kalis um, DT shoe in their own kind of vision, their own kind of colorway. And I like, that's what I like about some, so, some skate collaborations. When they get a chance to collaborate with a big brand, instead of just whacking up a, a random kind of, you know, Instead of whacking together like a random colorway that doesn't make any sense, they usually talk them back to some of the OG colorways and basically try and revive them because for the most part, most of these big sneaker brands don't trust in their archives. I don't know why. They tend to kind of steer towards the gadget or steer towards giving you, serving you these fucking shitty colorways, patents, weird materials, weird color combinations. So it's usually up to the collaboration, which is sad because it's a waste of a collaboration really because, you know, but a good should probably be going a bit crazy and trying to make more of a of a splash with their shoe but what you have to do as a as a as a brand owner is kind of you know weigh up the pros and cons and be like you know if i got the opportunity to go into a brand i love like dc shoes and actually bring back a shoe that may, reminds me of my youth and maybe kids nowadays will connect with it you'd have to do it in it and this josh kalis um og is so fucking good man so it comes with the, so in in the collaboration or the capture collaboration, you got a t-shirt, you got the shoe, two t-shirts here, you got a couple of hoodies, some long sleeve long sleeve shirts, jumpers, a nice little half zip as well. That's very very much in that same sort of vein. You could very much imagine yourself wearing this all together with the tracksuit pants and the butt and the bucket hats. Like so good. It's so, and again, it's it's a it's a collaboration. It looks like you can skate in it if you wanted to. And it's also a collaboration that you can also, you know, go and chill with because I think the shoes kind of lend themselves to it. And nowadays, anyway, it feels as if like um, it feels like nowadays the kids that do wear um that do skate for the most part, the kids that seen skating around Liverpool Street and shit, they look like they could go out the next stage. I mean, I remember when we used to skate back in the day, we looked dusty, we looked so haggard, so fucked up, covered in muck. And just not really looking quote unquote swaggy, but these kids look really good. Essentially, they all look the same. They've got the same fucking big mum lesbian jeans on with the converses and the, you know half zip fleece jumper things and the little hats and the tiny wheels and their skateboards. They all look the same. Don't get me wrong, but I like the fact that they look like they can go out um, at night and have a good time. You know what I mean? But yeah, I like this um, lookbook as well. Very very much influenced from the nineties. So cool shit there. You got a little single single gold chain. Look at how those look at how those Josh Kellis looks with jeans on. They look fucking banging. <sighs> if I could get a pair. If only I could get a pair. They all sold out though, unfortunately at the moment. It looks so nice, man. Such a good collaboration. Such a good colorway. The tracksuit looks fucking awesome as well. Um, nice logo. Again, though DCs are coming back into trend, it feels like. I wanna wonder why, man. Maybe it's a nineties revival. But yeah, great collaboration all together. Check them out if they're available in your local sneaker store. And again, another do-rag in the lookbook. Do-rags are all over the place, isn't it? If you've got a black guy in your lookbook, you need, you need to have a do-rag on, which is you know, interesting, interesting. But yeah, check them out. If they're available in your local skate shop, get them now whilst they're still available. If I was you, I'd double up on them. They look a really, really good shoe. I like how they look. And again, some of the stuff in the other bits are quite nice as well. We've got the whole... Um, breakdown of the shoe units as well so yeah very 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 much one of my favorite collaborations to come out recently so check that out dc shoes and butter goods should be available now in all your local skate stores if not it's sold out and you're gonna have to cry into your pillow like i do every night Ooh, doo, doo. next here what do we have we have these adidas liberty cups now i'm not these are i i, I think i've stumbled upon these because i was on slap message board or slap skate forum recently checking out all the new shoes that were coming out and catching up on some skate news and i stumbled upon these adidas liberty cups which i wasn't familiar with pre previously right again maybe because my body's telling me to go out there and skate again or maybe because i just want to you know get back on my board right and start pushing but um i quite like these shoes man they're quite they look quite nice again maybe a little bit boring for some of you lot maybe not the most trendy of looking shoe maybe the what do, is it what is it called in, in, in what, what is it called is it encapsulated when it's like the the midsole kind of wraps around what's it called cup so i don't know what it's called i've got the midsole there's a thing for it it's called but it's all like wrapped around anyway whatever that is that kind of midsole isn't the most popular of missiles you see so most time most of the things are vulcanized or they're stacked so it's not the most popular style uh, maybe they could do without the piping on the side here sort of like an basically for those listening to the podcast episode it's basically like a an adidas so it looks like an adidas tennis shoe maybe an adidas tennis shoe um inspiration low top with like um some neon green accents some piping on the side and a little bit here a little kind of 
blue bit that maybe is a bit for you to kind of ollie on i don't know what it is but yeah it looks it looks pretty interesting i'm quite a fan of it detail wise i quite i quite like them i had a super cups again i've not seen someone know where them i just stumbled upon them on a thread oh what's a bit there what's a little material on the inside there okay look like little, little tread the tread looks very really interesting too but here's a little intro on it from flat spot so we can stop assuming and guessing it says the adidas liberty cup introducing the liberty cup combining nostalgia with the latest skate driven performance feature the adidas liberty cup is a brand new silhouette that offers okay brand new silhouette so it's not even something a retro offers function through nostalgic design inspired by the tennis classic tennis court shoes of the 90s um drawing direct influence from the time when local skate spots were like world champion courts elements from both the past and the future result in a distinctive finish that reflects signature adidas styling interesting because it seems as if like every Everyone's adopting like the Gino method. Remember, Gino back in the day used to wear like he still does that now. Wears like um mon like kind of um essentially five side football shoes because they had more grip and they're a bit thinner than the shoes that he was wearing when he was started skating. So if you're from the DC era and there was big chunky shoes everywhere, the Osiris and shit, and you went to wear a bit a shoe that was a bit more flat, had a bit more of a lower profile, maybe had a bit more of a connection to the board, you could actually feel it through your feet and shit. Then you'd have to go through the soccer shoe, like an AstroTurf, right? Um, so that's where that little shape pace should come from. And I remember Alex Olsen started doing that as well. But it feels as if some of these brands are now kind of taking inspiration from that era and trying to revive that kind of style of shoe, which is interesting. But this doesn't really look like a tennis shoe, does it? Hmm. I don't know. But anyway, so since uh, sitting alongside a muted colorways of black hole, black, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is, this is basically a press run, isn't it? Set to arrive in October 1st, already out as a rider series. The. Um, Oh, team. Okay, Chewy Cannon's got one. Yeah, that's the one I saw. It's, it's a black and gum sole. It looks fucking beautiful. I'll link to that in the middle. But here's a quick video that kind of goes through it in action so you can see what it looks like as it's being used in IRL. In the streets of New York, of course. This is the white version. You can't really see it. To be honest, people skating in the shoes automatically look good. It's going to make them look amazing. Really. You're going to make any shoe look good if you're skating with it. Especially if you've got is that Tyshawn, whatever his name is. Yeah, you're always gonna, automatically going to make them look good, you know what I mean? Like, they look fucking great. I'm a big fan of these shoes. Ada Super Cups. Check them out. Local skate stores might be available right now. Or maybe not. You never know. Yeah, me like it. Me like it. Nice, yeah, a little one minute, video, one minute promo. I'm assuming this is probably uploaded on socials, right? Yeah, uploaded on social media. Yeah, me like it. Yeah, me, me like it like it so check it out if you're that way inclined there's a tree cannon one that looks fucking boss big sweatpants and tennis shoes man you just can't go wrong can you really in it so yeah i think that's the that's the colorway there right is that the tree cannon one i don't think is that the one hmm it's like black and gum but let me see if i can find it there's a tree cannon colorway that was a slightly different to the one that was previewed there Let's see if i can find it adidas liberty cup chewy uh, where is it? Yeah, that's the one. So it was essentially his one is completely black. I mean, all um upper oh, it was complete upper is black with a a really thick gum sole around the sides of them. They probably looks a little bit better in the kind of product shop. I'm not sure if I like them that way actually. What do you guys think? I think I maybe I think I might prefer. I think I might prefer the black with the white midsole and then the gum sole. I don't, I'm not sure I would like the whole complete gum sole on the side, but yeah, it looked pretty cool. Um. Again, check them out. Something a bit different from what's out there at the moment. I'm not sure if people are going to be into them as much as they're into the stuff they're wearing now. Um, but yeah, I like them, man. I like them. Ada Super Cups out now at the moment. They don't look too wide either. A very nice, sleek silhouette. I am a fan of these sneakers. So check them out if you're that way inclined and support the guy Chewy Cannon as well because he's a fucking ledge. But yeah, there we go. And that one, moving on. What else we have? Construction fetish, right? In streetwear. Yeah, this is an odd one. I saw this lookbook. I don't know what the brand is. It just made me think, like, what is what is with these brands? Maybe the workwear thing is probably similar. You can't really be mad at a brand for, you know, doing the whole workwear thing. But this thing is a bit... I don't know, man. What is it? Is it like streetwear cosplay? Like, I don't understand this. So this brand is called Unknown. Spelled U-N-K-N-W-N. Headline from Hypebeast, New York Sunshine Craft Construction Inspired Demolition Unit Collection. It's very weird. So you've got, they've essentially made hard, hard shell hats um, in the vein of a construction worker, you know, working in New York City or something, as you've probably seen from b the biography or from video footage or if you've been there yourself. You've got this weird mesh top on with 3M strips on it and the logo and fit maybe on the chest pocket. 
just a very bizarre collaboration. Why would you why would you want to make clothes that look like you're working on a construction site when you're not? Very odd. And again, a hard shell shoe, uh, uh, a hard shell hat. Why would you wear this? This lookbook is a very weird one. Very strange creative direction from a streetwear brand. I don't really get this whatsoever. Unless maybe the owner is from that world and maybe had, you know, got his, maybe made his money from working in construction and saved up and went and achieved his dreams. But he sees a lot of the lessons he learned in the construction site are very applicable to the streetwear side of it. I don't know if it's like a homage from where he's come from, but it just seems a bit, it's a bit naff, isn't it, really? Or standing on construction sites, not really building anything. Can anyone actually make anything in that group of people sitting around a table? If you can't make a clock or a plaster or a wall and you're wearing this sort of stuff, you probably shouldn't be wearing it really, innit? It's a bit mad, innit? Not a fan of it whatsoever. I, I, me not a fan. I, I don't get it. Again, maybe it's not dissimilar from brands doing workwear collaborations or doing outdoorsman collaborations, right? Um, being one with nature and shit, but this is a bit... Ugh. It's like, you know those skate brands that have a skate... You know those non-skateboard team brands? They just have a skate brand, but it's, there's no team towards it. They don't sponsor skaters. They don't stock their stuff in skate stores. It's just a brand that just emulates or trying to tries to replicate or tries to basically suck all the joy and all the spirit out of skateboarding and just basically make it into a clothing line. You'd, you, you'd imagine... It, 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 this is like what, if, what Zara do when they try and do streetwear, right? They just make... They just put a kid in, in some shoes, in some streetwear shoes, to streetwear clothing that's really baggy. He's got tattoos on and big earrings and like a weird color hair. And like, you know, that's to them a streetwear because they just take all the fucking joy out of it or the, the X factor that makes it what it is. And just they just take the elements and say, yeah, that's streetwear. He's got a bucket hat. He's got a big hoodie with a logo in it. He's got some jeans. He's got some colorful trainers. This is similar to it. So it's like, why would you want to wear this? And these pictures as well, they're pretty awful though, isn't it? Like that's so far away. You can't see nothing. That's again, the back of him facing a wall. Like, I don't know. Guantanamo Bay merch. Me no, no, man. Like, what's this? 9-11 merch. Very, very odd. Unless all the items are going, the, the money's going towards helping people get into this level of charity, but it's a bizarre collection. I do, I just don't get it. Like, why is it? Why does this exist? How does this get on high? Again, you know what this does to me, though? This makes me wonder, or this makes me believe that if I had a brand, I could be successful. Because this is garbage, isn't it? No? Or is it just me? Caution install team unknown. Like, what the fuck is this? Again, unless the people that are making this unknown brand are, have some sort of connection with I don't know, manual labor of some sort. The parents are from there. He's got, I don't know, it's just, it's a bizarre thing to wear. Like, why would you wear any of this? It's so, so shit. So, so shit. Especially the, the hard shell hat as part of a collection is odd because this is something that maybe Supreme will do as like a knickknack. Maybe as an accessory to kind of, you know, add to the whole thing. But I don't know, haters beware or something. Beware of haters up above. I don't know, whatever. But as part of a collection of a of of, of powers of capture collection, like what are your you, your customers meant to do with that thing? Put it on their shelf, wear it. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of it, man. I'm not a fan. I'm not gonna say it. again. I don't know. Again, I think for the guys out there that again going back to my debate, going back to my rant about kids uploading images of PSD files of line sheets that they're hoping to design. Stop hoping to design stuff and put actual physical products out. And fucking, you know, you could also be on hype beast. You could also get your brand out there. I'm not sure how much they've sold of this, but yeah. <clears throat> Doesn't look good for me, mate. I'm not a fan. No, thank you, sir. We'll move on from that one. Um, what else we have here? A lot to go for, actually. But you know what? We're going we're gonna to stop it from there. We're going to come back again tomorrow, another episode. Part two of that will come back because I've got to get up anyway. An hour's up. And I have to leave, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, thanks so much again for tuning in. If you're watching via the YouTube app, give me a thumbs up maybe click subscribe if you want to check out some more of my videos and keep abreast of my updates and my uploads as i mentioned before i've got a little playlist on my channel of all the clips i upload so check those out check those out if you can that'll be awesome um i've also like i said mentioned i've started a new podcast called shepherd red devils i'll put a link in the show notes check that out it's a new podcast you know put centered mostly on manchester united news from a perspective of a fan living in london Stratford like myself so check that out if you're that way inclined if you want to know about my dj gigs check out my website actionzinger.com you'll find all my dj gigs on there or google me dj handsome black man dj handsome black man you'll find my resident advisor page on there as well all my event dates and all that malarkey and if you are listening via the podcast app why not give me a five star review why not write something really nice and let me know what you like about the show what you don't like about the show any questions leave it in the comments and let me know but yeah until then 
um, see you guys very, very soon. If I don't see you until the weekend, then have a good weekend. But if I don't see you until the end of the day, have a good end of the day. Right? Yeah, right. Anyway, see you very soon. Take care. Bye. Peace.